In today's video, we're going to take a quick look at Capture and Kansas and how we can sync the two softwares together and how we can make use of the auto patch function between the two softwares. I'm going to start off by talking about Capture a little bit first. So in Capture, I've created a show. I put a bunch of lights down here. I've got about 16 lights, a mixture of some psych lights and some wash lights and spotlights and stuff like that. I've given them all a universe and channel number. So we have two universes here, A and B, one and two. They're all in the correct modes that they need to be in. And I've given them all a channel number. You have to give everything a channel number in Capture in order for Kansas to be able to figure out what fixtures those are. In Kansas, these would be our head numbers. And we want to give every fixture a distinctive head number so that way we can make our groups and we can choose our fixtures and we can order them in the orders that we want to and things like that. So every fixture has to have a channel number. I go through and I also give them a unit number just for the sake of continuity. I'm not sure it's as important to give it a unit number, but you do have to give it a channel number if you want the auto patch function to work. Once that's all filled out and done, my battle is half over. Now, the other thing I need to look at is the connection, making sure that the two softwares are talking to each other. Uh, one thing I can look at in Capture is this project console link. So the first thing that I want to look at is, do I is it disabled, like it says here? And do I see my Kansas software down here? If I do, I can click on it, and there it is. So now if I know I see my project console link, I know that I'm, they should be talking to each other. I should be pretty good. The other place I can take a look real quick just to show you is where it says external universe here. I want to make sure that these all say Kansas Magic Q. If those two things are reporting back to me that they're connected with Kansas, then I'm pretty sure that my patch is going to work just okay. Just fine. Now I can take a look at some things here in the Kansas side of things, and we'll talk about that before we actually do the auto patch. So some of the places that I want to look for here is in setup, in view DMXIO, I want to make sure that my visualizer field is set correctly. I have two choices here if I'm using Capture, it's either the same PC or a remote PC. So on the same PC just means that I'm using the software on the same computer that I'm using Kansas. They're working together on the same computer. If I'm working on a remote computer, then that usually means that I either have um, I either have a actual console, like an MQ80, an MQ70, or something like that, and then I have my capture on an external computer. Either case, you want to make sure that you have the set, that you have the correct network settings set up. Okay? So the next thing that I would want to look at is in view settings and network. If I'm using a remote computer, then I just want to make sure that I'm using the same IP range, the same IP scheme. So if this was my IP for my Kansas console, for example, then my computer would probably be 192.168.1.105 or 107 or some other number here at the end. Same subnet. Because I'm using Capture on the same computer as I'm using Kansas, my IP scheme is not as important, but what is important to me is this right here. In earlier software versions, uh, 1890 and back, we have a setting that says, send to applications on this PC. And you want to set that to yes. If you're on newer software, then you might see this setting, net host options. And if you see that, then you want to open it up and you want to choose either normal or strict plus loopback IP. You want to use this loopback IP of 127.0.0.1 and that's going to allow different softwares that are on the same computer to be able to talk to each other using the loopback IP. Okay. That should be about it. You might want to go in and check your multi-console setup and make sure that this is set enable remote control and enable remote access is both set to yes. Once all those things are done, you can go into the patch window, and then your viz patch is right here on your Y encoder. If I just click on it, 
it's going to bring up some options for me. And I want a capture patch because that's what I'm using right now is capture. And there it is. Everything is patched in. It's got the correct universes and channels. And then everything has a head number based on the channel numbers that I gave my fixtures here. So I have 101 to 104, and then 201 to 210, and 301 and 302. And same here. 101s, 201 to 210, and 301 and 302. So the last thing I can really do is check just to make sure that everything's connected well. So I can take my fixtures, put them at full, put them in a color, take my wash lights, put those at full. I can check things like position, and just make sure that everything is talking to each other correctly and well. I'm going to shut down this program real quick. And I'll bring up our visualizer. And now you'll see in our visualizer, all the lights are in their correct positions. So I don't have everything. I don't have some of the truss. I might need to add some truss in there or something like that. But as far as the X, Y, and Z positions of my lights and where they are in space, everything is in the same space as it was in Capture as well. So now I can just add in some truss and some other items if I want to. And I have both my Magic Q Visualizer and my Capture Visualizer that both work. If you have any questions about this, by all means, feel free to contact us at support at